Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco, and tonight we're going to be talking with Alex Tussaud of Alex's Knife Box, a regular contributor here at Thursday Night Knives, and uh, we haven't seen him in a while, and uh, we're looking forward to having him back on the show uh, for the full episode tonight. But before we get to Alex, uh, when he joins us, uh, I, I want to tell you about this kind of lame experience that happened to me, all due to my own maybe overexcitement and perhaps, uh, well, hypocrisy. Let's just say it. Adults are hypocrites. And I, I know that because I have kids and they regularly reflect back to me my hypocrisy. And one of those things is I'm always nagging them about double checking their work. Make sure you check your work. You know why you're having me check this math? You, you haven't looked at this. Make sure you check it. Caleb, nice to have you, sir. Howdy. And uh, so I bought a, a bad monkey from a, from a great gentleman on Blade Forums, Women Carry Knives. Lovely to see you. Uh, thanks again for that, Piet. I'm going to call it the Piet. Uh, hello from Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. Good to see you, sir. Most likely. Uh, but uh, so I, I bought this bad monkey at a great price. That's the four inch Rusty. Good to see you, sir. That is the four inch uh, Mike. Hello, sir. Uh, that is the four inch, um, oh, what the hell is that company? Southern Grind. Uh, that was, I think, the very first knife they came out with. It's got the Emerson Wave on it, four inch blade uh, of 14C28N, which is an interesting thing, but this is an older knife, I guess. And uh, it's got some carbon fiber handles, all this. Got it at a great price. I've always been curious because I know that Zach Brown, uh, the country music star who heads up that knife company, uh, has always loved Emerson knives, as you know, I do and modeled his knives, uh, at least the first one, the Bad Monkey, off of an Emerson. So I've always been interested in, in getting a Bad Monkey and never, <laughs> hello, sir, good to have you, sir. Uh, never, never gone all the way and gotten it. That sounds crazy. Uh, uh, so I ended up getting one and the guy's like, yeah, your, your PayPal doesn't have your address. And I was like, oh, I thought it did, um, but actually it didn't. So I sent it to him and my old thumbs, uh, you know, just are not that, uh, like, uh, I don't know. I, I hit, I hit letters that I don't intend to hit, intend to hit letters and numbers that are right next to the ones I intend to hit. And I expect that the thing knows what I'm thinking. And, you know, I've typed, maybe I've typed that in a number of times, so it's going to fix it for me. And it didn't this time. So, uh, the, the bad monkey came to, well, they tried to deliver it on the street, but that's, that uh, address doesn't exist. And so it went all the way back to California. It's a total bummer. And I felt terrible getting back in touch with the guy who was great to deal with. Barry, good to see you, sir. There in uh, Colorado. Uh, you're, you're very elevated there. Anyway, uh, the, this, this thing, now he has to receive it, go back to the post office. I'm going to PayPal him another 10 bucks for his trouble. Uh, but ah, I feel terrible about that, you know? Plus, I don't, I don't want it to mar my rating on, on Blade Forums. I don't think it will. Excuse me while I take a sip. So tonight we're going to have Alex Tussaud on. He's going to talk about some beautiful... Oh, sh speak of the devil, and there he is. How do you do, sir? Man, it's hotter than uh, hotter than hell out here. That's for I, sure. I do believe it. Cheers, sir. Cheers. Well, you know, I'm in Virginia, and it's a different kind of hot. I think you've got the dry heat. I've got the swampy kind of heat here. Yep. Yeah. Muggy. So I was just talking about how I just bought a bad monkey on the uh, from on from a great guy on Blade Forums, and when I went to do the, you know. Kane, it's good to see you, sir. When I went to check on its progress, where is this damn knife? Because I expected it to be in on that day. I saw that they were returning it to the sender because I wrote the, the wrong address, like 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 a first-year thief. Ugh. Hey, woman, carry knives. Dang it, Bob. Come on. Yeah, what a, what a what, story. You, you know, I like the best story was the one that you had with your first, like, expensive <laughs> custom. That with was this the one. one. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was the that was the best, man. Well, I I chased down the DHL. You know, uh, we were coming home from work, and and I picked up my daughter from school, and we were in a big hurry. I'm like, baby, we gotta go. Something's up. They're trying to deliver it to an address that doesn't <coughs> exist. By the way, it was the same bad address I sent to the other guy. Bad monkey. Good to see you, sir. And what a great offer he gave me. Um, but anyway, uh, so uh, I was not able to chase after the mail truck, um, unfortunately. So the bad monkey is on its way back to your neck of the woods. And and the guy's gracious enough to turn it back around. And and I, I'm looking forward to having my hands on that knife, I got to say. Yeah. Yeah, I've always been interested in that knife. It's been in and out of my cart over the years so many times. <laughs> and Zach Anthony. Brown, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anthony, good to see you. What did that What did that last uh, lower third say, Jim? Hey, Therapeutic Edge, good Therapeutic. to see you. Therapeutic. And Tad Watson. Anthony Claus, uh, Strike Force. hello from Baltimore. Hey, Baltimore. Go there every once in a while. I've been there before. They have the most awesome uh, aquarium over there. Oh, my God. That's, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I remember going to that aquarium and thinking, uh, uh, well, it's worth the money because it was expensive expensive to get into. And I remember on that day I was being a curmudgeon. I was like, I can't believe I'm paying this much to see some fish, you know, some fish. And I go inside and it was breathtaking. It's pretty cool. Hello, hello to you, Anthony, in Baltimore. So, uh, Alex. Yes. Tell me what's going on with the rebranding of your channel and your videos. They are looking really good. Uh, I like your new format. You have a new format. You know, uh, what what you expect to see and in what order is different. Uh, but also the opening graphics are sweet and splashy. I love that. But I really like how, how uh, in this latest video, uh, in these latest couple of videos, you're kind of doing a, 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 a history and then a tabletop. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm still working on the format. It's not dead yet, uh, dead set yet. I have one coming out on the Spyderco Meerkat. Please, everybody, I, I spent hours clipping this thing. Please, everybody, watch it till the end, all the way through <laughs> this next one. All right, I put some music. I did, like, stupid stuff. And um, I'm, I got bored, man. I just, you know, so I'm trying to figure out something that – makes people interested in watching, you know, the videos more from A to Z. Hey, big boy. So, what's up, big boy? Well, Alex, so. you know, I, I, uh, part, part of my job, like a huge, probably the biggest part of my job. Hello, Jared and Kara. Good to see up, you. Neves? <laughs> uh, the biggest part of my job probably is editing video and putting together packages, uh, for television and stuff like that. And it can be maddening, but you will hit stride and then you will see what works. And then it will be uh, a format in which you can have fun and be creative, but it will, it will be different, but the same every time. Right. Right. Well, and that's the whole idea. And it's not really like, Oh, thanks Neves. Appreciate it. I think you guys will like this next one a lot more. It's it, I, I really spent time and I haven't taken any formal classes, so I'm trying to figure out how to clip stuff, do little effects and things like that on my own. And I'm doing it on a cell phone. Oh, so That's you know, impressive. That is impressive. So the next one, I, hopefully you guys will like. I, I thought it was pretty uh, – it got my wife laughing. She already saw the intro. <laughs> so cool. if, she, if she laughed, it's probably maybe – hopefully get a chuckle out of somebody. Um, but I – put little clip stuff all the way through to the end. So we'll figure it out because it is hella time consuming. And you guys know, like the advanced knife bros, the master at this stuff. Oh yeah. No. And of course I talk to them all the time. And, and especially now, since I'm trying to reformat the channel, I'm asking them for stuff, you know, like of what I'm doing and some of the stuff that he does like a little theatrical and comedy, I'm kind of doing to my channel. Now I'm just testing it out and see how much work. And if, I'm actually even funny and if it's even worth doing. So we'll check it out and see how that comes out. Well, here's the thing, Alex, in your tabletop, just your straight tabletop uh, reviews, your personality really comes through and it's engaging and it's fun. And you, and you get, uh, uh, you know, you seem to get your dimensions. You're just adding to that by, you know, with this edited sort of uh, uh, intro part, I, I think it's uh, only adding to it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I hey, appreciate it. Oh, my, my, yeah, absolutely. What, uh, that amazingly cool, uh, what the hell is that in the beginning? It looks like the birth of a planet or, 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 or oh. super hot steel going into some crazy medium. What is that? It's, it's basically like a, a flame that burns and etches the Alex's knife box logo on the back and then the vapors kind of go away. No, no. I mean, um, I know what it looks like, but where yeah. did you get that? How does that, or you don't need to tell me where you got that, but that is a really cool image to me. And when I see that, I think the birth of a knife because, you know, forged in fire, birthed in, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. we all know that steel requires heat, hilltop knives and gear. What's up, knife junkies? Good to have you, sir. What's up? What's up? Uh DJ. So uh, anyway, I'm 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 really digging the new videos and the new direction, and and you can tell like just you know ever more of your personality and your passion for knives is is coming out through them. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's all about trying to have some fun with it, and then you know just entertain myself and some people, and try to do something cool. Thanks, Dave. So <laughs> five you different know, models. My God. <laughs> yeah, because he's playing around you know yeah i remember his comment actually he left a comment on there so thanks for that um but yeah you know like i've i've had the channel for about a year now and it's just it's time to do something new and see if i can uh just step it up a notch i mean i mean hit 800 subscribers yet <laughs> come on i suck at that oh dude so you'll be, there, you'll, you'll be there in no time. I mean, these are all, all it takes is that, you know, I, these look at these. Each one of them is a masterpiece. Yeah. Knife. And and now, um, you know, and your analysis the whole way through has been excellent. And now you can even tell, you know, your background and your lighting has always been great. Your analysis and commentary has always been great. And now you're adding this edited portion. Uh, I would call it a roll in at the, at the top of the show. And it's like, it's really killing it. Yeah. Yeah. And well, it's also cool to get uh, like these knives, like the, the Reese Whelan knives or knives that are out of your collection. Yeah. That's a big thanks to Dirk for that one. You guys go subscribe to him. He's doing great by the way. Um, and he, you know, that's the thing about his channel, as I mentioned in that video is that, you know, you never know what you, if it's his personal collection, you never know what's going to happen, you know, like what you're going to see on that channel. It could be something really crazy that you've never seen before. So that always keeps me glued, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh, do you prefer or not do you prefer, but when you get a knife coming in from someone else to look at, what's up, Lavender Pants? Good to have you. Uh, when you get a knife coming in from somewhere else, uh, mm -hmm. do you put it to the same um, standards that that you put the knives that you put in your own personal collection or do you, uh, do you change your criteria? Well, I think this is very debatable between a lot of YouTube reviewers and, you know, I mean, I'm no expert. I'm just a knife collector like everybody else. Just trying to have some fun. But I think a lot of times when you get a knife, there'll be half of the people that'll say, well, you know, I got to carry this thing and use it at least got to cut some cardboard and I got to cut some of this and some of that. And then after that, I got to put it in my pocket and, you know, run errands and go to school and do whatever and do that for a week. And then I know what the knife is like. And then there's the other half of the people, which I'm more on the side on personally, where you've handled so many knives that after you kind of observe it and look at it, you're like, okay, I get it. That's what this thing is designed for. And that's what this thing is good at. So, of course, you know, it's always better to own it and carry it. And I've only recently started taking in um, borrowed knives and mostly only Dirk because I don't usually send out my knives to anybody else for the most part, but he's been getting mine. Um, but um, it's kind of nerve wracking, you know, you're on the, under the pressure or the radar like, I got to get these things back in the mail. Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> did they get there? And it's, it's, it's nerve wracking. And then like when I have one of my own knives, you know, I can, you know, cut whatever with it or do whatever, which have you, you guys have never seen me do any cut tests, but I actually cut some stuff in my next video. So, you know, a therapeutic edge says, 
two types of reviews using carry or just overview. And, and yeah, I agree. I like both. I like, uh, you know, a, a guy like Alex, a guy like a therapeutic edge. I know they know knives and I will trust their five minute assessment, but it's also a thrill to hear Yeah. I've had this, uh, I've had this Appalachian for six years and I've never used anything else and it's the greatest thing. So go buy one. You know, that that's also a kind of video, uh, that I really like. Um, yeah. so, so both, I, I I am in kind of more in your camp. Uh, I'm a tour watching dirt. Yeah, I take a tour around the knife. You know, like I could try to like take you guys on a tour around the knife with me, and show you like what I notice right off the bat and the stuff that's obvious. But there's people out there like, you know, like I really like Eugene Kwan because of the yeah. words he uses, right? And then there's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's so many talented reviewers out there. It just depends on what you're looking for, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always said it. My favorite YouTube guy is Advanced Knife Bro because I don't like to take it so seriously. Yeah. And he's so good at that. Like, he just, uh, you know? Yeah. He's really, a good I just writer. Wanted... He's a good shooter. And his his stuff is funny. And and you know he he knows and likes knives. A and and, and we're all in his or many of us are in his boat. You know he's right. got uh, you know kind of a similar. We're in a similar situation. So. Yeah, he's great. I love Mark. Um, so by the way, me and him are uh, working on a collab video. So keep an uh, eye out for that too. Very cool, Eugene rocks indeed. And, and so uh, you were talking about how you take people on a tour of the knife and. That's kind of funny that you say that because your background is a world map, you know, a cool 3D relieved world map. And uh, it is like you're going on a on a tour. Yes. Uh, can you go back one? Uh, yes, Eugene is awesome. And uh, just go back one. Uh, experience matters more than knives. And experience. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, and then I would also agree with uh, it. It is cool to see someone say have a, a pm2 for a long time use and abuse it and say yes this thing is really worth all of the 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 talk that you know thanks dave oh yeah, yeah you know what i i think there's great reviewers that do great stuff as far as you know you got your steel testers right which are a lot of my buddies i i i actually kind of interact with the uh steel nerds a lot mm -hmm. which is funny because i'm not a steel nerd whatsoever i uh, I halfway care less. <laughs> uh, so that's what's yeah. funny about it. But, um, you know, and then you got the guys that do the high end, like Jim Skelton and Dr. Franke, and everybody's right. got their niche. But what I really want people to take from my video, and I haven't really figured out how to, how to put that through my videos, but what I want people to understand is, and maybe it's better if I get a knife. So, for example, like a knife like this one, oh. right? Mm. This is a knife by a Polish, a custom knife maker in Poland. And it's a $600 knife. It's very plain. It's nothing crazy, but it's, it's beautiful. I mean, it's so well finished. You can see the hand rub and the fine edge and that sort of thing. And what I want people to like appreciate that if even though this knife has S35VN steel, you know, there's different reasons why people like to use steels. For example, some of them polish nicely. Some of them are stain, stainless. Some of them are for use and so on and so forth. But as much as for the hard use steels, there's also for the artist that likes to use the steel. So, um, you know, I think that's the best thing that people could take away from my channel if I ever put that across is that no matter how weird or eccentric a knife is you always notice i never really like dislike anything per se i can appreciate whatever it is i may not buy it for myself but i can see like it's for somebody you know there's a reason why i went into production in the first place yeah yeah that's kind of uh so a couple of those comments of uh, spirited whiskey very psyched about the new direction your oh, uh, videos are taking Excuse thanks me. ryan who makes that knife kill? Well, you can tell by looking at that knife that whoever made it comes oh. from the former Soviet bloc. It just has those lines, man. Doesn't it? it? Beautiful, beautiful. Eastern European slash like Russian lines. Yes. So oh. the, the knife maker is Katie Knives. 
He's a Polish knife maker. I think I got this from True North Knives, if I remember right. I think that's the knife store where I actually purchased this one. But there's uh, there's quite a few of them. And uh, Jim Skeleton does a great video on this thing. Really ma made me appreciate it. And when I got it in my hand and in person, I totally agree with his review 100%. It's a fantastic knife. And so it's cheap. Can I vote for myself? Hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, question for you, uh, Alex. What were you carrying today? Was it was it that the KD knives? No, I. I, was... I watched so many reviews. <laughs> I like the way you put that. <laughs> yeah, so do I. <laughs> I love it. I like oh, yeah. knives. Yeah, me too. Yeah, love I, I've been loving your uh, therapeutic edge uh, and and. Uh, and sometimes women carry knives. The what's in the pocket videos are awesome. They're these little two minute videos. What are you carrying today? I love those videos because I know right. when I'm at work and I'm uploading or downloading or rendering or whatever, I can I can catch the complete video and and kind of see it in hand and open and close. And you know, that's vicarious knife owning right there. So I I love those videos, guys. Bad monkey says uh, a simply done knife done well will always attract me more than something busy. Yep. Also, also me as well. Even though every once in a while I'll see something with Mr. Furley issues that really grabs me. Uh, you know, um, uh, you know, I have a, a soft spot in the heart for Mr. Lightfoot, and when he does something busy, for some reason I like it. Uh, maybe it's the natural materials or something. Dave Everett, oh yes, forgot about Bob's reviews. Super job on those blades. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, she gave me that awesome. Where is it? Oh, my wife is absconded with it actually. Uh, the, the peat, the piet, I like to call it the piet. I don't know why. I think it's high handed, maybe a little bit, but I like that peat because it's Jesper Voxnes or Jesper. I, I don't And his designs are just out of this world. So what were you carrying today, sir? Uh, I was carrying a Medford today. Oh, really? You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> Something special about this med? Let me see. Well, so... I actually have, I've had this one for for years, and this is a uh, Praetorian Genesis uh, G. For what is G10. Genesis? What does Genesis mean? Genesis means so Genesis. This is the mid size Praetorian. I the full size one is a little bit on the large size. Mm -hmm. This one is actually. Um, as I showed Bob earlier on a picture, when you close it, it's about the length of a Delica on the handle. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So, um, but the problem is this beautiful 3V blade had a warp to it. And you could tell this is an old school one with that. that what? Yes. What? A warp? It's warped. It's very hard to see. And I think it's only on the bevel, but it has a warp to it. And I only discovered it when I was trying to strop the edge just to kind of touch it up. So I'm going to send this back to Mr. Medford. This was a beautiful one in a pretty mm -hmm. rare configuration. But um, in the meantime, I bought a replacement, mm -hmm. same knife, but in a tie version. Man shouldn't be without a tie. Gen oh, my God. That so is beautiful. So this one is a Vulcan as well, but it's S35VN Vulcan, not 3V Vulcan, which is why it looks a little bit different. Um, but yeah, that's what I was carrying today, just to kind of check it out. It's a drop point. It's pretty cool. How do you like the drop point versus the Tanto in the Medford? Mm, it's hard to say, you know? I like them both. That's hard to, I, I don't have a preference really. They're both pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So show show the other one, the one that the Jupiter one. Pocket oh. check, Reich Tule. Tule, first integral G10 folder. All right. We talked about that one a couple of weeks ago uh, on the Wednesday show. Dave's oh, carrying, the Reich? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the G10 integral. Pretty cool. Seems yeah. like a material that's just uh, ripe. For that kind of thing, just right for that kind of uh, knife. It's <laughs> fantastic. You see what I did there? So was wah, that it? Wah, wah. Was it? Was it? Did you double Medford or just single today? No. So well, I mean, I I had this one that just came in a couple days ago, and this one's because of Dirk. Mm -hmm. So I just reviewed his Micro Praetorian, 
And um, man, it's hard to really show off all the details, especially the pivot. Pivot's crazy on this one. Um, but you see a lot of uh, anodization at the bottom of those little um, divots there. The exactly. Five. Oh my God, that handle is just gorgeous. So, so um, this one is the micro Praetorian. And um, this is because I fell in love with Dirks. Um, and so I had to have my own. And then this one's actually, this one's a Tonto. Oh my gosh. That's so 35. Cute. What, what is the length of the blade on that? Oh shoot. I don't remember. Oh, I, I think it's just than, a hair under three inches. I was going to say, it's gotta be less than three. Cause the other one's about three, I would imagine. Yeah. But that, so that's the one that looks like uh, Jupiter, right? That's yeah. 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 I'm a sucker for Tantos too. Bad monkey, like big time. Yeah, look at that. It looks like Jupiter. Look at that anodization. That is just, man, that is out of this world. That's funny that you came up with that because I actually thought the exact same thing when I saw the picture when I bought the knife because of um, that little portion right there. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's like a it's a it's like a storm that's actually, you know, 400 miles wide or, you know, but from, like the eye of the storm, right? Yeah, yeah. That that thing's like five earths wide i think something crazy that which is, is funny because this one that's actually what they named jupiter this. and vulcan uh i get it it all makes sense now you know yes it does okay and and then <laughs> we're this talking one. about the greek gods as filtered through the romans uh bad monkey looks almost like starry night yes it does uh go back to the last one before that jim if you don't mind look at that that's 2.8. 2.8 inches. I, okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think I remember it being 2.7 something. So the one you've got up uh, looks like, uh, you know, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. We're, we're, we're evolving here. So this one they actually call the Eye of the Blue. That's What's the that? actual name of the anodization. So Greg's Eye actually, of the blue? yeah, he's actually doing his trademark patterns, I guess, or something like that. Um, yeah, I've never seen him name an anodization before, but it says it on the box. It's kind of crazy. That's cool. Hey, uh, Jim, could you put up a Therapeutic Edge's last comment, please? So uh, knives might be any color. colors. <laughs> yes. Agreed, <laughs> sir. Yes, yes. Or green. They can be this green if it's military green. <laughs> Agreed. Right so, uh, Alex, have you seen <coughs> the aptly named Benchmade Meat Crafter? The oh Meat God. Crafter. <laughs> I, made a, I made a post about that on Instagram. <laughs> that was ridiculous. All right. So so let's tell everyone what this is. It's a scimitar-shaped. Uh, it's, it's the meat knife that you... Uh, cut, you know, when you're butchering, you you cut the cut into its final cut with this knife, and it's called something like scimitar. I can't re remember actually, but this is an S45 VN knife. S45, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the the uh, rightful heir to S35 VN's uh, 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 throne, I guess. But so this uh, this thing looks beautiful it, it has a cool sort of reverse bolster and yep. this great new super steel right that has 10 more than s35 um but the name meat crafter to me man i can't get over it. it's like calling a it's like calling an ambulance a meat wagon it's like so mm -hmm. mm, like mm, it's, it's a, a little... porn star name <laughs> yes it is yes it is Yep. Yep. I think I heard that it's it's because it's designed by some YouTube guy that's the meat eater or something like that. Meat something. Uh huh. Okay. So and so, then they made this. This is the meat crafter. So yeah. He's, he's a YouTube guy, I think. Huh. Interesting. I I, I didn't see that in the uh, in the one article I actually read on it, but uh, uh, have very few anodized handles. They tend to change color a bit after use. Mm -hmm. But some like that. Well, it's kind of like the patina effect, which I'm I'm very fond of with uh, with brass and uh, copper, and of course uh, uh, high carbon steel. Is Alex going to be in the next town hall? We have not spoken about that, Lavender Pants. Thanks for bringing it up in public. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I'm quite Maybe. sure. Hopefully he will be there. No, Bob, don't cheer Peter with his plain colors. Well, <laughs> hey, tan's not so plain, is it? No, no, I don't think so. I'm sure he can go to go to tan. Uh, you know, it sometimes it it makes us feel like we've got a tool on us and not just a piece of jewelry. Uh, so uh, these these new Medfords that you have strike me as both. They look very they they are very art piece ish. You look at them, you're dazzled by the handles, and you want to uh, you know you want to just. Uh, Pour yourself a whiskey and stare at them for a while. Uh, but also, they're fucking tanks. I mean, yep. you know, even this little tiny little uh, midi that I got from you is just the tankiest little thin knife ever. A little big yep. knife is what it is. Uh, I'm sorry, Jim. You put something up and I ignored it. I'd like to see what that was if uh, you could go back. Joe... Stray charts. I've Meteors been loving on Netflix. Steve. Oh, oh, that Ranella. is there. It is. That's the guy. That's the guy. Oh, who that's a, that. that's Steve Ranella's knife. I only yes. know him from Joe Rogan, but he's a he's a very interesting dude. Me yeah. crab just collab with Steve Ranella. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, that yeah, all makes that. sense. Meat crafter. It's still meat. a terrible name, no matter <laughs> what. It is a little. Let weird. me let me pull out my meat crafter, baby. Okay, so, okay, Therapeutic Edge says, functional art, it's a real thing in knives. Okay, I'm going to, this This is a, a great topic of debate. It's been a, a big debate in my family for years. It's a debate I've brought into my marriage, and uh, it has to do with art and design. And uh, to me, art, uh, to me, uh, knives, even the most arty knives, even the most... Um, uh, fine materials and and craftsmanship and and it, it's still because it has another use other than being appreciated uh it can still cut things it can still be used as a tool therefore it's design it's only art if it can't do anything else but be appreciated like a painting on the wall or um you know I guess you can burn it and warm yourself with it so it becomes a tool at some point but uh, I, I have the perfect knife for that subject too Oh, excellent. And I don't yeah. mean to get all like, oh, therapeutic edge brought up. I think, man, I'm going to, but it's just something that like that whole art and design thing is something I like to get in, in the uh -huh, lavender pants. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> How about now? Hey. Hey, I guess, uh, I guess I'm going to be there. What's it worth to you? <laughs> that was supposed to be money. Awesome, sir. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Uh, what were you saying, Alex? Well, so I, I like that because that, that is a huge debate, the functional art thing, right? Yeah. And I think that's why people pay more money for knives. I don't think it's because they function much better. I mean, let's be real. I think once you surpass about a $200 level um, on a pocket knife, I think it's going to be about as good of a cutting tool as you can get. I mean, if we're, unless we're talking about super specialized stuff like sushi knives or whatever it may be, right? Yeah. But for a standard EDC pocket knife, once you surpass that two hundred dollar mark, you're you're really going for aesthetics, you know, or a brand or yeah, whatever yeah. extra. You could argue once you surpass the hundred dollar mark that you're now looking for something else. It's now going from a cutting tool into a luxury item, and that's fine. Plains Crafter says if it comes too artistic, I get scared to use and carry it. Yeah, exactly, and and yeah, I, I mean, have I, a knife like that. I, I mean, so oh, what man. is it? And you have a lot of fancy knives, but but well, uh, this one was is really really special because. This is a knife I've been after for a really long time, and I'm a huge fan of these guys. Um, this is a Culture Tech Urs. Oh Jesus! Excuse so, my French people. That is so awesome. So yes, this knife is like one of those functional art kind of deals, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's it's literally polished by hand in stone, and you can see these guys on Instagram polishing these things by hand. It's you can see my own reflection of my or your. For, ugh, that's incredible. It's a and even the edge is so fine, right? So 
you can see all this stuff is all done by hand. And then it's got similar to like a smock lock. That's what this little device is right here. So, you know, when you push it with your thumb, you kind of push, it's hard to show, but you push it, you slide it forward and then push it in and then the knife closes. Rusty, we're going to have to argue about that. So uh, that is beautiful. And, and I would say, Eric, can you open that up again? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on the, other, the other way, <laughs> the other open. Uh, so ordinarily I would look at, I would look at the angle of that Warren cliff and say, hmm, that's a little bit too obtuse and not stabby enough for my taste. However, that 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 full belly and man, look at that mirror edge, by the way, that full belly and then and then the same um, sort of angle on the spine create a, a beautiful wedge shape that that sort of obtuse uh, triangle at the front is still stabby somehow. And that's that's long for man. What a beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I don't it's have one I've always wanted. Display channel. Yes, it's, it's yeah, adult show and tell. The warranty and quality means more to me than aesthetics when I cross over the two. Yeah, yeah, well, Hilltop, it sounds like you're a person that uses your knives hard because uh, I could see how actually the warranty, and, and what's great is that, uh, let me finish that thought. Uh, I could see how the warranty could be a very important part if, if you're, if your daily knife is your daily tool that you actually rely on for work. Um, and a great thing is, is a lot of trusted YouTubers, a lot of the people I watch do a lot of warranty videos, you know, throughout the years where they'll bust something Slicey. up. Slicey. Nice to have you, sir. Where they'll bust up a knife, send it back and say, well, I'm not going to let them know I'm slicey dicey, but I'm, I'm going to uh, try out this warranty service and I'll let you all know how it turns out. And I think that's a really valuable service that a lot of reviewers give. But also, I totally see his point. If if your knife is something you live by, for sure, for sure, that's important. My Kali instructor used to say that a knife should have drop factor. If you can drop, if you can't drop it, don't carry it. That's interesting. And, you know, I could almost see a Kali instructor saying, if you can't drop it down a sewer grate, don't carry it, which also would make sense, like a throwaway. Neve says, knives are thoroughly in our blood. We have been partnered for thousands of years, and it's a bond that can't be separated. You're absolutely right. That's poetic and beautiful. It's kind of like uh, dogs, you know, um, the first domesticated animal, I guess. But uh, we kind of have a similar kind of bond. Uh, and and I'm not a dog person yet. We just put in an application. Uh, Triple E D <laughs> e -E says, I cut myself earlier, so knives were literally in my blood today. But when you do that, don't you kind of feel justified? Well, it's a good thing I have this knife because now I can't get rid of it. It's tasted my blood. That's a thing, really. I've Come found on. that once they bite you, they bite you pretty often. It's oh, that one knife. Which one? Well, de depending on like, usually when I get a knife, if I cut myself with it within a day or two, it's one of those that repeatedly cuts me for some reason. I got I you. Have a few yeah, yeah, right, right. Like the metamorph did that to me. Jim, two two back about the Protect Brend one. The Brend, uh, the Protect That's a nice Brend knife. is a god, oh, it's a gorgeous knife. It's got this great uh, angle to handle, uh, like uh, the blade angle to the handle is like this. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thomas says, talk about self defense. I discovered the Protect Brend one large automatic five inch blade. And it, it, first of all, it's a beautiful blade, beautiful knife, gorgeous handle. And Walter Brend, his fixed blades were just so gorgeous and very expensive now. Yeah. And, and very uh, coveted. But that, that uh, Protec model has a five inch blade, which is rare outside of cold steel. And uh, um, just the look of it. I've been wanting Ooh. to get that, and you can't find them. Uh, now you can find the three inch version. Dave says, uh, knife cuts you, you must keep it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I usually do. I still have one of those. Rusty, I just, uh, just sent my first knife in for repairs. User error cross thread and break. Okay. Cold steel. I've heard, uh, see what happens. I've heard cold steel is excellent. Um, you know, I agree. Once, once bitten, bitten, often, often bitten. bitten. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so, uh, Slicey, I, I, I bought his, 
uh, Appalachian, which was my pocket uh, in my pocket today. And right nice. now it's going, it's going through this phase uh, that my thir my CQC 13 went through and my sax went through where it's, it's moaning like an old man. Listen. I have some, uh, two of my Emersons did that. It just my, takes a little my, work through it, but geez, man. My combat fighter does that, and it's been doing that for years. So <laughs> oh, to, for yeah. years. Well, um, I don't um, carry it that often, though. So yeah, I, I, it's a, it's a, you got to ride, you know, uh, on the way to work, flick it a, you know, fifty times. On the way home, flick it fifty times. Eventually, it'll uh, yard ships tomorrow. OCD. Hmm. Nice. Wait, what? What's OCD? What, what's OCD getting? Oh, obsessive compulsive. Wait, wait. What's shipping tomorrow? Let us know. What's shipping tomorrow? Hey, Bob, I have a chisel ground Emerson that I just sharpened. Oh, no, no, no. I know. I saw that. Uh, you meant. And so, uh, Neve, uh, Jared, this is going to be your the first one I send you. Yes, it's another Warren Cliff that I dropped. This one is not so severe. Uh, no, that's but, an easy fix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after, but after Jared uh, told me uh, about the. Uh, the chisel he ground. Uh, yeah. I want him to do that to this. Nice. Knives moan for you about this, right? <laughs> All right. That's it. That's it for that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got one more cool one that I'm going to share with you too. Wait, before uh, we get to that, before we get to that, let me just finish my thought on the knife that Slice oh, please. Me. I actually used it today. I've been carrying it around a lot to kind of break it in, but I used it because I've totally redone my, not totally redone, but I did a lot of work to the space that, that I'm in here to kind of um, just make it better. And I was cutting up some boxes and I used this today and I never use chisel grind blades to, to cut uh, cardboard and stuff, but look at how, look at how broad that edge is. It's so yeah. thin. Uh, it was awesome. It was the best chisel grind uh, cutting cardboard experience I've had. So thank you, Slicey. All right. Nice. So, were you about to hold up something with stag? Did I just see stag? Actually, it's called Woodland Micarta. I think some of you guys may have seen it. It's a brand new knife that just got released from GEC, but it's a big oh, knife. Geez. It's like 3.75 inch blade, mm, mm, mm. 8.25 inch overall. Um, it's kind of a, it's a trapper pattern. So you got a trapper blade here and you got like a large spay blade up in the bottom right can here. I, can I see the spay? I love GEC spay blades. I think they make the best in terms of shape. Anyway, yeah, look at that. And look at the swedge on top. Put that a little bit closer, uh, if you don't mind, please. Yeah, that's just a beautiful, such a useful blade, that spay blade. And the funny thing is, is it's exactly what it sounds like it's for. It's for castrating farm animals the spay blade i guess it's not too pointy so you don't poke stuff you're not supposed to but boy it, it does the rest of the work it's supposed to do look at that holy mackerel <laughs> yeah i don't know what i'm going to be using this big humongous spay blade to be spaying, <laughs> but <laughs> onions yes um, got some onions here i got a uh, yep onions by the way cutting the, the the every once in a while cutting onions with one of those and and the gec 1095 uh, gives it a great patina and it's an honest patina, you know? Yes. Yes. Honest it's a real that, legit one. Yeah. It's legit in that it was made by something other than like you just putting vinegar on it. But you know, ordinarily how often do you pull out your slip joint to cut onions? Triple EDC says, Oh Jesus. I didn't know that's what it was for. <laughs> just <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Uh, I'm waiting for GEC neuter blade. <laughs> Man, you know? you know, I think this is it. I mean, that is hard as hard. big as it gets for a spay blade. I think, you know, yeah, this is the biggest spay blade so tell I've me, ever seen. Tell me about that micarta. But really, tell me about that micarta. I really don't know much about it. This is a brand new knife that just came out. It just got released. Um, it's the 93 pattern, but they call it the woodland micarta. And I like it because it kind of resembles like bone or stag. Yeah. It looks like white linen micarta or natural linen micarta that's had grooves cut out and then the grooves mm -hmm. stained and then the rest polished. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I love that shield. Oh, I, I think yeah. I might be going back into a traditional phase now that you have this sucker out. But first, 
I have to get a Spartan Harzy folder. Does anyone have yes. a Spartan Harzy folder that they want to uh, that they want to sell to me? I want a Spartan Harzy folder so badly. And actually, uh, Alex, you and I were talking about. Uh, I asked you what knives you had on the chopping block, and uh, but but really, I think that's my next big purchase. And to me, that's, that's a, a good idea. idea. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because when you asked me that, I told you. You're like, I want something tactical. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know what I like. A, I'm like, how about a full titanium Tonto uh, knife, you know, and you're like, fixed blade. So <laughs> I actually even enough. brought it too. Oh, let me see. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Oh, my good Lord. What is that? It's made by um, Momer. And um, you can see it's been carbonized on the edge to keep it sharp. Oh, and hard. that's the full titanium knife you were talking about. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> so uh, benefits and drawbacks of a full titanium knife. You look frozen to me right now. I'm not it's, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Am I back? Yep. I think you're back. So, what so the advantage, there's no advantage. It's just. Honestly, it's just cool. It's just you know, cool. it's light, you know. It's it's lightweight. That's it. So that's it's a shiv. It's a beautiful titanium carbonized shiv. And and this is a custom knife. I didn't um not ex exactly. Mm -hmm. It runs, I guess you could say, but I mean it's all in house. It's one guy that does the whole process. And he's got different models too. That's a that's a nice looking knife, man. I'm a sucker for a tanto blade. That's a beautiful one. I like I like a tanto that has a bit of belly, you know, and then and then a little bit of a curved thingy at the end. I, I can never remember what that's called. Yeah, something something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget. Yeah, yes, something. Yes, something like that. Yeah, yeah. You're so, close. Uh, wait, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about. Do you care about integral? I, uh, Dave Everett was talking about his new Reich, the Integral uh, G10 Reich knife. Benchmade is now out with a new Integral Bally uh, 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 song. Is that interesting to you, Integral Bally song? I think inter Integral's period are pretty cool. Um, I have a set of channel lock Bally songs. Which is like the equivalent of like uh, like the integral. I have a really nice set, and what I like about them is they ring different when you're using them. Hmm. So, but this one's cool. I like this knife. This is a cool uh, follow up to like that five. Was it the five twenty seven? Or I can't remember what it was. That was the one that had the the quillions and the and the uh, drop point blade, and and some of them had an like an insert on the handle or something am i mm -hmm. yeah well no i mean i'm talking about the the one that the last one that had that magnetic magnetic clip like this oh one yes up. right 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 that, that one cliff one with the warren cliff yeah i yeah. think dirk did a video about that recently or someone did a video of that recently bobby needs Maybe. to check out the tucson ts196 it's a sweet tanto Tucson TS196. All right, I'm I'm on my computer right now. I'm going to check it out. T I've heard a lot about Tucson. Yeah. Yeah, we we lately. They really are pretty pretty awesome. Uh uh Jared Neve sent me some recently. Jared and Kara sent me some to check out. And uh oh yeah, that is nice. Oh, that's got that sort of Okay, all right. Okay. Uh what's that guy's name? All right, there's a knife maker that I follow on Instagram who makes these unbelievably beautiful tantos similar to the, the Tucson. That's why I, that's what made me think of it. But that have a very long and graceful front part. Uh, oh God, that's pathetic. Uh, I think uh, Wingman EDC just came out with a, mm -hmm. with a, with a version of one of his knives. Uh, in small form, uh, J, ah. J.I. knives, uh, no, nope, something nope. Inglacius. Is it Jared Inglacius? Can you guys see me? 
If you guys can see me, I can't see or hear anything. Or did we lose Bob? <laughs> All right, well, if it's only me, guys, let me check and make sure. Oh, all you out. All right, buddy. All right, guys, so I actually brought out some other knives that I, because I know Bob likes some stuff. So here is a fixed blade I got many, many years ago. It's from Fox Knives. And I used to be in the Marine Corps, so I got this Marine Corps edition. And this knife actually is made by Fox Knives, and it is called the Predator, which is pretty wild, but pretty cool knife. Uh, it was used in by the Special Forces in the Chilean Army, um, also a few brands in the U.S. military. So pretty neat thing. Um, Go for it, Alex. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> and then um, another one that I brought out. You guys might like some classics. It's got a whole bunch of finger oil all over it because this stuff does uh, rust. But this is an old school Bark River with um, some A2 steel. I don't even remember the model name on this guy. But with some nice bone handle. And if you guys really want to know what my actually favorite knife, if I was going to run out of the house and pick one knife out of all of them, ex including all the expensive ones, I'd actually grab this one. And this is the Bark River Bravo Survivor. It's another pr first production run. Very old school. I think this thing's about four or five years old. It's got black Sea Tech handles, and it's kind of interesting. They integrated a little uh, lanyard loop in the back. Nice forward finger choil. That is the ticket. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, since I'm solo, you guys are gonna have to start asking some questions because. I'm not like Bob, and I don't know what the hell to talk about. Bark River has excellent fixed blades. You're right. You have to excuse me, guys. It's like 90 degrees out here. So uh, that Bark River was about, I think it was a couple hundred bucks. I think like 240 bucks. If you guys want the 3V version, you spend a little extra. Yeah. C-Tech is a very nice uh, handle material. The only thing that sucks is if you drop it, like because I actually take this knife outdoors with me a lot, um, if you drop it on the corner, it cracks because it's kind of like an acrylic. So that's one of the problems with C-Tech. Uh, but overall, it feels really nice. I like it. One thing I didn't show you guys with this Culture Tech too that you guys didn't I don't know if you guys all saw this one, uh, but just to be a little bit more fancy, one thing that these guys integrated is a titanium corkscrew. So if you're out with the ladies and you need something, you know, a little bit more fancy, you know, you got this right here to open the bottle of wine. Pretty cool. All right, guys, ask some questions, ask away. What is my number one folder? Wow. Hey. And Bob's back. Number hey, one folder gonna is going to be this one right here for right now. It's that culture tech. <laughs> What's up, Bob? Check this out. So this, this is a wine key that i drew uh and then you bought your your knife and it, it's kind of the, it's a similar oh yeah concept. yes see? so that's the part that angles you know there's the corkscrew and the thing and the 
Right. But th but this knife can handle more than just the foil on a on a uh, bottle of wine. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's it's not flimsy. I mean, it is. It's titanium, and it is nice and sharp. They did it right. It's kind of interesting the way that it works because, you know, on the back side right here, they do a barrel spacer. And then it just kind of – it, and it's down low enough where you don't feel it. It's all the way sunk in there, which is nice. <laughs> oh, my God. I knew it would happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my girls are hogging the bandwidth. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, we um trying to remember where I was going. I was going to ask you something. Hollywood Tactical. What play would you recommend that's like your Bark River, but much more intro affordable right now? I've got the Gerber Strong Arm. Okay. Uh, how the Gerber Strong Arm is great. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you want to know? Okay, so I showed a few fixed blades while you were Ooh. doing your thing. So, <laughs> doing but I thing. told them, I I don't know you. you oh, know, I love that. Is that the this Bravo? Is, this is the Bravo Survivor. So, it's. Uh, I told them this is the knife that if I run out of the house, no matter what folder or anything that's in my closet the one knife that i will grab before i go if i bug out this is it that's so gorgeous, i take this thing out all the time and um and i've had it spawed once um bark river's spa process is beautiful they do a great job did, so did you get it spawed because you didn't think uh, uh what you got was was great or because you used it and thrashed it and needed it to uh Okay. Good. Mm, mm. That's Thank a, you, that's Ted. A, or Tad. That's, I'm sorry, Tad. That's a funny story, Bob, because I actually did mess it up using it. Um, I, I chopped through some stuff and I used it and it was fine. The problem is, is that I, I hiked out through some wash one day and I got so far out and it rained really hard. And then there was a wash that came through. So I had to go through some really deep water, <laughs> and apparently it's that beautiful Los Angeles water that. By the time I got home, my knife was like black. From what the was water it? A that is had that a gone through the A two. A two. Okay. So it's A two tool steel. I mean, it, it corrodes, you know. But usually with A two, you know, as long as you wipe it off, you're usually a okay. But the problem is with this, this water obviously had some kind of like acidic, mm. maybe chemical or something in it. Probably Who lots. knows where it ran. Yeah. Yeah. For what it did to my knife. So I sent it out and they made it look brand new again. So there was that question about fixed blades. Uh, uh, depending on what you have to spend, um, uh, Topps Knives has some great fixed blades in 1095. Yep. And 1095 is a very tough steel. It can take a lot of action but if you don't have tops money to spend the um the cold steel srk that's survival rescue knife it's one that they've had in their roster for uh, i think at least 20 years it's a very standard sort of clip point but it's three six three sixteenths of an inch thick it's a it, and and you keep that thickness pretty much all the way to the front but it's got a nice swedge if you need to uh, thrust it into anything. It's got a nice, uh, thick uh, Grivex handle with thumb, um, I'm not thumb, but palm swells on two dimensions on the on the on on the dorsal side and on the side side. And uh, that knife is forty bucks SK5 steel, which is a high carbon steel. So it's tough and it'll take an edge easily and keep the edge pretty well. But you can thrash on it and it's not going to chip out on you or break it'll roll on you before you, before that happens. So that 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 SRK survival rescue knife uh, by Cold Steel is a really great deal. By the way, it's it's coated with um, you know whatever they coat it with so that that blade steel can take it. Uh, wait, I came back and Bob is on right. What happened? I mean <laughs> that yeah yeah. Okay, so what happened is we lost power, which which happens here. Uh, even though we're in a major metropolitan area, uh, we lost power for no apparent reason. 
um, but we got through this and I'm, I'm now doing this on my phone, hence the different angle on the room. So, uh, so hang on, let me, before we finish any of this, I want to ask you about this, uh, this Rockstead you have on the way. My bailout set up. Oh God. I don't know if I have it out of the way. I have to sell stuff. That was just something I discovered today. Oh, Bob. okay, okay, okay. All right. I mean, but yeah, it's it's a mission. Guys, if you guys go on my Instagram with something you want, you can reach out because right now I'm in that mood where uh, there's something I'm hunting. So It is a tremendous beauty. It is a – can I can I spill the beans? I mean, I don't even know the, the actual – Yeah, man. But it is an – It's the Rockstead Ren. Gorgeous – Rockstead. What did you say? Rockstead what? It's the Rockstead Ren. Ren. R E N. Okay. Beautiful Tanto with a crazy, it looks like it's got uh, laminated steel, um, but it comes together at a really cool angle across the, the blade. It's, uh, it looks. Yeah, like multi layered handle, crazy Tanto. It, it, that's a, that, when I saw that knife, I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> so I'm like, what else can I sell? Yeah. Got its hooks in now. All right, so I I I would like to start a uh, the knife fight and then and then see if we get any reactions and and see what people think because uh, would you recommend the SRK in three V? Well, I don't know, but I will say that um, every other steel cold steel uses they are phenomenal with their heat treat. So I can't imagine that three V would be any different and uh if you like the characteristics of that steel and the characteristics of that knife i would say go for it because as fromage as you might think cold steel is their their knives are outstanding really, damn really it we are. should have convinced lavender pants he was crazy <laughs> yeah they are really great great knives and especially for the price i mean really alex did you see the ed cope lr6 come in also nab the dude no, I haven't seen it. You're always nabbing stuff. Spirited Talk about a come guy on next that... week. Come on next week and show us some of your new acquisitions, sir. Definitely. Yeah, that to... guy buys stuff like even more than I do. It's it's insane what Ryan gets. I mean, but this is the same for the two of you. I mean, because uh, and 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 hold that comment for a second. I'm going to get to it in a second. But you and uh, Ryan have like excellent taste. There's a difference between, uh, you know, having the resources to, to, to slurp up as many knives as possible and having the resources to, to put towards actual good taste. You know, as we know, money cannot buy taste. And the two of you guys have some excellent taste in knives. I mean, and, and he keeps coming up with these mayos and they're, man, they're fine. Yeah. Fine knives. So, Jim, what was that last one that was up? I think it was. I said that PV is more expensive. If I remember, I'm sure it's worth it. Is there a bargain than that? Yeah, and 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 with something like, I mean, you gotta, you have to consider this. If you really are planning on um, thrashing, at, I'm not talking about Alex's thrash, which is running out the door at the end of the world kind of thrashing on it. Because then, yeah, you'll take your Bark River. But if it's like going camping with the with the friends or family and you're going to be thrashing on it while you're drinking beer and, you know, doing the campfire or whatever, I would say take the cold steel on that occasion. Because if you, if you pass out and leave the handle too close to the fire and it melts, it's not such a big deal. Whereas if you do that with your bark river, you're going to be hacked about it. Uh, I have a slurping up knives. Sounds painful. (laughs) Yeah, 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 definitely. There, there used to I be actually, a I have a great recommendation. I have a great recommendation for a, a, like an inexpensive fixed blade, which I actually own one, and I use that a lot too. Is an Ontario uh, Blackbird SK5. That's a great fixed blade. It's not too expensive. Um, that's that's a really good knife. Blackbird. I'm unfamiliar with that model. The SK5. Yeah, it's pretty popular. Uh, Jim, work your magic. Ontario SK5. <laughs> Pull it up. <laughs> that's a phenomenal uh, knife that's been recommended by um, a lot of survivalists. I think it's one 154 cm. 
if I remember right. Oh, so I it's got a good steel. Five steel. I thought that. Right. No, that's the model. So it's got, oh, um, yeah, and that knife, um, I thrash it. It looks kind of like a Kephart design. It's a really cool knife. Oh, Kephart. I like Kepharts. They're so s oh simple. This is relatively new. This, uh, if I'm if I'm thinking of what you're talking about, it came out maybe two years ago, um, and there it is. Oh. Okay, that's not what I'm thinking of. That's cool. Wow, that's, that's expensive cool. for that one. That looks I'm like sure. something from World War II on the German side to me. And, you yeah. know, as a utility knife. Well, I think it's supposed to be a lot like a, a, a um, airplane survival knife, like yeah. airplane pilot survival knife. I could see that. Uh, but it works great, man. I put, like, a nice axi edge on mine because I used, used it for chopping and good triple edc good to have you sir thank you take care what uh before we get to the i just sold my rd6 what's an rd6 go into the google later what's an rd6 rd6 <laughs> knife let's see you get to see my caveman typing all right uh so alex what do you look for in a fixed blade when you're i mean do you so you have a lot of folding knives with a lot of fine materials and a lot of fine um, construction. When you're getting a fixed blade knife, are you thinking of something, are you looking for something else, something more robust, something more? A little bit something different. I, I tend to not like fixed blades that are slicey. I like, you know, like big, beefy fixed blades. Right. Um, like I said, I think th that, that Bark River I have is – Pretty much exactly like what I what I love in a fixed blade period. Like this, this is exactly the perfect mm. size, yeah. the perfect shape, perfect everything. You can do pretty much anything you really need to. It's not going to be good at everything, but it's going to be able to do anything. You know? Yeah, but with the height of that blade, and or the mm -hmm. the, the width of the blade and the height of the grind. And the fact that that's a Bark River and it's got a convex grind, that thing must be slicey as hell for what it is. Oh, it does good. It does pretty good, you know. But even though it's got this nice convex edge, I mean, it it will definitely shave hair like the way I, they got it. I haven't taken it back out since I had it spawned, but. I love a convex edge. I actually convexed yeah. uh, a obtusely ground chisel edge uh, uh Emerson and kind of used sandpaper and a strop and and just sort of turned it into a chisel ground uh, convex and it was man wicked sharp and then I sold it to an engineer that I work with. Are you ready for a knife fight, sir? Let's go. <laughs> All right. So I want to talk about uh, and I'm surprised we haven't done this. Before. Oh, is that a Strider? No. What is that? A pull oh. forth. It's a uh, it's a fox knife. Ah, oh, is that designed by Dietmar Pohl? Ah, uh, I can't remember. That's cool, man. That's I've beautiful. had this for years. No, I thought we were fighting, so I brought out my knife. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> All right, well, I'll leave it over there. But um, so. Carrying knives, <laughs> holy shit! And I'm trying to be all serious. Uh, Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, carrying knives for self-defense, is it a an unrealistic thing? And, no. and we're talking about, you know, we have people, uh, well, you may have trained, let's say for the untrained, is it, a, is it an unrealistic thing to carry a knife um, for self-defense when you might carry mace? And depending on how the wind's blowing and all that. Um, so the question is, is carrying a knife for self-defense tenable or is it only an EDC tool? Hmm, that's a good subject. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to be, uh, you and I are going to be on the same boat on that one. You know, I'm I think say. so. And I think, I think maybe you should take the self-defense side and I'm, I'm going to take the EDC tool. <laughs> yeah, you give me a handicap, huh? <laughs> no, I'm not giving you a handicap. It's just like we all know what my propensities are. Yes. Uh, you know, 
I carry this every day. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I love this knife, by the way. Sog Super Bowie. That's badass. That. I mean, that's just beautiful. Is that a black DLC? It's a black, uh, yeah. You that's know beautiful. I, I say yes, and I really don't know. I don't know what that coating is. It's a black coating, and it's it's got like a mirror polish on it, man. That's or not beautiful. a mirror polish, but a satin polish. Mm. Yeah. This is what I like Sog for. Yeah, I saw this knife awesome. for the first time, and you know, at the end for yeah, agreed, agreed. But we have now you're just giving him ammunition. I saw this knife first in Terminator Two, with a regular six inch version of it. Gorgeous knife. She's gonna blow him away. That's when they discover that she ran away to go kill. Oh, what's <laughs> but anyway, all right. So, shall we, sir? Give me one second to just plug in here because I think my laptop's about to. I'd rather run to... than be in a knife fight. Well, that's the one hundred percent the smart strategy uh, because they say um, no. You know, nobody wins the, the in a guy knife guy's fight. Second is the one who wins in a knife fight. Uh, Tainai coating. Thank you. That's what it is. Tainai coating. It is a beautiful coating. Blades up close are messy. Expect to get cut. Said my teachers. I prefer to carry them as tools. And last ditch self defense. Right, exactly. I rely heavily on the one finger technique these days. One finger technique. Is that like, um, kind of like the fencing punch where you hit them in the. The five finger death <laughs> punch? No, the one finger. A shillelagh. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, I don't have my. Sh I, I have an Osage orange shillelagh from a, a limb that a friend of mine gave me, and it's been aging for 15 Stassa. years. And it's, that, hey, Stasa, good to see you, sir. Unfortunately, if someone broke into my house, I feel like I would grab a sword or that Osage orange shillelagh before I would think to grab a gun, which is a, something I have to retrain in the brain because uh, I'd rather be the crazy naked man with a gun than the crazy <sighs> naked man with a sword getting shot by the guy with a gun. Dave Everett, one finger on the trigger. Oh, yeah, dirt is mostly agree. All right, so are you ready? Ready. All right, let's hear it. So so I'm defending for self-defense knives? Yeah, is that what I'm yeah doing? That, that a knife, okay. that a pocket knife that you're carrying, we'll, we'll be more specific. Uh, um, EDC that, that versus... That you're justifiable in carrying one of these things and thinking about it also as a protective device, not only an EDC device. And I'm saying no. This is a tool. Don't be a, a fuzzle. You're not a oh, one of those. Okay, okay, I got it. Got it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this fine establishment where uh, we can have this forum which we discuss these tops, uh, topics that are so important. Here, here. Uh, so tonight's topic is, is a knife, a item that you should carry for self-defense. Well... I ask you, why not carry a knife for self-defense? It's handy. It's right there on your person. Your wife can carry one in the purse. You can have one in the pocket. And at a desperate time with desperate measures, if somebody's going to be big enough and overpower you, you need a tool. Not just a tool to cut threads off your shirt or cut your thumb on occasion when you're flipping your knife, but you need a tool to defend yourself. That's when having a pocket knife is utmost, the most important thing that may save your life one day when you're in that dark alley walking by yourself. Well, I work with a guy who every sandwich slightly out of order, I premise, because to me, at least part of EDC is about. Hmm. Thank you, sir. You're just cutting to the heart of the whole argument, but we're going to get there. I'm trying to just play along, but I, I see it as it's a tool and self-defense for of sure. Of course, of course. But <laughs> there's this guy at work who every time there's a bagel to be cut or every time there's a sandwich to be cut or an apple to be cut, he feels the need to pull out this gigantic scary knife. Lindy Lou, good to have you. Uh, and, and you say, what's up? We're in the middle of a knife fight. And Alex just defended carrying knives for self-defense as well as EDC. And I'm saying, no, no. We are not cave people. 
We are not living in the 16th century and having duels on the street. What do you need this for <laughs> on your person <laughs> on a daily, daily occurrence? It's just not necessary. Really, you know, the way I see it, I, I think it's great. People should have knives. People should have knives like, like this, this Finch Runtley. This is a great little non-threatening knife. And I think everyone should be able to have one. Now, this, I don't know. Something like this, I really think that you need to be specialized somehow or have some sort of special qualification to carry because it's kind of scary. And I don't know what's going to happen in its presence. So I think that little knives like this are fine for EDC, you know? Sometimes you have to open a box or a letter, you know, from the government, from the tech. You know, sometimes you have, so it's this. It's this that you need. Anything else, anything else means that you've got something else on your mind. And I don't like what you have on your mind. Well, therapy. I do have a dirty mind, so. Uh, that's my religious appeal. A therapy that is good. Head. I work at club security in San, at San Francisco and Sacramento on, all over the Bay Area for 10 years in the 90s. That sounds like fun. And in a whole time, I saw a knife used two or three times in a fight, maybe. So, therapeutic heads, tell me, when you saw a knife, uh, tell us, when you saw a knife used in fights those couple of times, was it used with any skill or was it more like, you know, um, uh, you know, I'm kind of curious, like when people pull out, when you hear about people using a knife, I'm always surprised when it's not a kitchen knife and it's not like a, a lover being caught, you know, in the heat of the moment. Um, so I'm interested. It, was it a well, folder? What? Tell me about the the details. And I know Jared has some experience. Uh, the two times I was attacked by a knife, it was so fast there was nothing to do but go hands on and get as close to the knife or the wrist, probably. Yeah, see, man. So Jared, that's something um, uh, we need to talk about. It sometimes you you have some stories we want to get out of you, Lindy Lou. Me too. I don't know shit about knife fighting. I'd run before I fought with a knife. But okay, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go. To, it was stupid fun. Therapeutic edge, great to have you. Always a pleasure, and I love your videos. Slashing mostly angry <laughs> slashing. Yes, but like the Roman army, you have to learn to thrust, so we don't have to employ pikemen to go around the battlefield and kill all the stragglers. Uh, but it, basically, uh, what I'm getting at is. Uh, what was I getting at? I, I kind of lost it. Uh, you, you and I already fought, Bob. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. I'm just, now I'm just I'm taking advantage and, and listening to the sound of my voice. All right. Uh, well, uh, man. So, what do you what do you have uh, on the in the offing? What's coming in in the next few weeks? What can we expect to see from you on your channel? Um, I got that, that new Spyderco Meerkat video I'm working on that hopefully um, uh, turns out pretty good. Um, and then I also have a uh, knife versus knife video I'm working on where it's mm. going to be a Microtech SOCOM versus a Protec TR2. So out the side autos. Oh, dude. That's a good one. Yeah. That's so those one. are my well, two videos. TR2. <laughs> whiskey time hello uh i i do love the tr2 and i have the socom uh it's it's non-auto but i love that it's a tie women carry knives thank you thank you but i you know I, I was being a little facetious i don't think that was in good faith a therapeutic edge i learned by observation the best offense is a sound defense and just get the hell out of the way you know i Everything I talk about is theoretical because I've only ever dealt with knives in a in the um, controlled setting of a martial arts studio with friends who don't want to kill me, you know. So uh, everything I say is 100 percent hypothetical. I've never been a bouncer or, you know, thank I've God. Had a, I've had a knife pulled on me once. It was uh, one time, one time. And it was when I was in the Marine Corps. Um, Marines train field artillery on army bases. So there's usually 200 Marines at Fort Seal where there's like 15,000 army guys, right? So we're a very small bunch. And usually we're not very well received. And one night 
at a bar. We got into a bar fight, and the army guy pulled a knife on me. But luckily, I told him, if you pull that thing out, you better intend to use it. If you don't intend to use that, put it away. And luckily, he just put it away. That's That reminds me of uh, that the World War I guys, you know, the Germans and the British <laughs> on Christmas Eve having a yeah. Maybe it's not so bad. Maybe I don't want to kill you. Yeah, well, you know, we're both armed forces and everybody's yeah. drunk, you know. It did it did escalate it continued Dave. to a fist fight, but it was only a fist fight at that point. It was good. Right. Dave, it was good to have you, sir. Uh I think uh I think Alex, I think we might be on the way out here, sir. I think I'm pulling into the station, but I would like to say that uh, I got that bad monkey coming and when it comes in i'm i can't wait to show it off because uh i'll save my story for the podcast next time excellent and then uh jared uh let's uh let's talk about that idea we were talking about could be fun hmm. little mystery hmm? tune in next time to find out what i'm <laughs> just kidding uh all right so i think that about does it caleb says blade show in 57 days i will not be there unfortunately i cannot be there in 57 days but uh I'll be there next year, for, and yep, that will be too. my first time. And Alex, I will get to shake your hand and meet you in person, which will be awesome. And oh, yeah. uh, a lot of I'm gonna be like, to but brother's got a hug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, everybody. Well, oh wait, 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 wait. I can't sign off here. I got stabbed in the chest in a fight in a bar. Holy it was shit! Still in my chest after the fight. The cops were the ones that pointed it out. Holy shit. I still have it. And it was a 112 Ranger. God. Wow. And and with, okay, obviously adrenaline and, and, and shock and lots of things had to do with it. But I'm thinking in particular of the handle of a Buck 112 Ranger. That is a heavy affair, man. Stas is going to be there. That's a, that's a brass liner with two brass bolsters and wood in the middle. That's a heavy fucking handle to be sagging out of a knife stuck in your chest. That's that's an unbelievable story. I mean, obviously, I believe it, but that's a crazy story, man. And how cool that you still have that knife and that you're a knife lover. Um, that's a that's a pretty cool story. So pass that one <laughs> yeah. down the ages, through the ages. Big time. So that about does it for this episode of Thursday Night Knives. I want to thank Alex for joining us. Alex, thanks for coming on, sir. It's been a pleasure. And, Thank you for uh, having me. We love every time seeing you and uh, getting your insights and stories and new knives, etc. And for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying, please don't take dull for an answer.